which humans were never meant to see. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we what we do. We break down skate creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained. You can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank you guys, man, who's been tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. You help us. You're helping us grow our community, the seekers. Really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, also follow me on my social media and send me videos where you guys want me to react to so I can um, switch it up for you guys. That's what we do best. I seek the truth. She filmed a video of her smothering her son and sent it to her friend. This is 20 year old Emma Rigdon from St. Louis, Missouri. On April 15th of this year, Emma was with her son when she slapped his leg and put her hand over his nose and mouth. Ooh. Obviously, this was preventing him from breathing. Emma decided to record this incident and send it to a friend. She also recorded another video of her covering her son's face with a blanket and her hand. This caused the boy to cry and grab at the blanket. Once she sent that video to her friend, she also sent a handful of text messages. The first text said, I don't know, when I do that, I feel an adrenaline rush. The Damn next it. text said, I stopped right before he dies, last time he was blue. Mm. The last twisted text she sent said, I really want to analyze him, but I don't want to go to jail. It's unfortunate, but he's just going to have to pay for his existence. What? The boy ended up surviving his wounds, and now someone else is taking care of him. Emma was arrested and charged mm. with abuse or neglect of a child. She remains in jail without bond. This man is the most dangerous prisoner Crazy. in the world. You won't believe what he did. A couple had just bought a brand new house that they moved into mm -hmm. to start a new chapter in their lives. However, the first night that they moved into the house, they began to hear noises in the basement. Mm -hmm. The couple then decided to check the basement. When they got down to the basement, they saw this scary man immediately. They called the cops describing what he looked like. They described him as over six foot tall and looked like a monster while on the phone with the police. Mm -hmm. The phone mysteriously seriously hung up. The couple then began to scream for their lives, but you never believe what he did to them. Photos with disturbing backstory. Praying for a teammate that was murdered. The killer was present. Salmon do not preparing for rescue. Suffocated after rescuing 13 people. It's crazy man like I said these pictures and stuff man that we see they it always like gets my mind turned man when you look at a picture and, like you really don't understand the backstory behind it it can look all seem all innocent and it's really like a dark history behind it that's it you gotta pay attention man to the details the picture it tells the story Next up, on July 20th, 1793, 
Scottish explorer Alexander Mackenzie completed the first European east to west crossing mm. of America north of Mexico. It's crazy to me that on this exact day a couple hundred years ago, people were exploring the land that we call home. Next up, on July 20th, 1881, mm. Sioux Indian chief Sitting Bull surrendered to the U.S. federal troops. Sitting Bull was an Indian tribe leader who led his people during years of resistance against United States government policies. He surrendered in exchange for amnesty for his people. Mm. Finally, on July 20th, 1917, the World War I draft was held. Secretary Baker, who was blindfolded, drew the first number from a bull, followed by many other numbers over the course of 16 and a half hours, Ooh. and every number was a different man. And believe it or not, but on that day, 1.3 million men were called up for the draft. This literally happened on this exact day a little over 100 years ago. It's crazy, man, how many incidents happened on July 20th, man. I mean, there's, I don't know, there's a type of energy going around on that day, something like that, bro. I'm really going to have to check out those events to actually make sure that they happen. See, because you can do that as well, man. It seems like July 20th, we're going to have to mark that date in our calendars. This looks like some big stuff goes down on that day. Not alone. What are you about to see? Edit. Call it like I see it. Further that you look into dark history, you start to realize just how dark it really is. Mm. This woman behind me. This is Lorleen Wallace. She was the first female governor of Alabama, and she was diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer. Dark history for Lorleen was that legally, doctors did not have to tell her. They only told her husband. What? We let that sink in. She was diagnosed with stage four Insane. cancer, terminal cancer, and only her husband was told. Her husband decided not to tell her. Legally, he didn't have to. It was thought at the time that women's nerves were too fragile to be able to handle news like this, so only their husbands were told. I think we're probably going to cover this on the podcast, mm -hmm. because this is actually a pretty in-depth story, if you want to listen. Basically, the way this story ends is that Lorleen, she does become governor. She runs, but she only lives through the first year of her term. She was never initially told she was dying. Fun fact, That's insane. most of the thermostats found in office buildings are fake and only there to trick workers into thinking the temperature has been changed, but really they don't do anything. Whoa. To keep things as efficient and cost effective as possible, most buildings have been converted to automatic thermostat systems, where sensors are placed in the building that read the temperature in the room and then turn on the heat or cooling whenever the temperature gets out of range. And generally, the temperature is set by the landlord, not the renter. Since heating and cooling costs can quickly spiral out of control, most commercial leases include a specific air temperature range for the building. But managers, landlords, and HVAC technicians got tired of the constant calls from workers telling them the heat or air conditioning wasn't working, so they came up with a solution. They began installing fake thermostats in offices so workers could have the illusion of control over the temperature, but really they don't do anything. And one HVAC technician estimated 9 out of 10 office thermostats are fake. The craziest execution methods. Part 8. The nitric acid bath. Heavily used by ISIS in Iraq. But there are reports of it being used in other Middle Eastern countries. Mm. Found to other prisoners and placed inside of an iron cage. You were then slowly lowered into a vat of nitric acid. Nitric acid is a colorless liquid highly corrosive to the human body. Mm. The scariest part is, they don't completely submerge you. They dip you in and out just enough to dissolve your organs. Fuck that. Oh. These are some extreme... That's a bad way to go out. Seekers. Hmm. Couldn't even imagine that. It's like they're trying to play with you or something like that. Hmm. Edit. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. Hmm. Part 21. This photo shows an eight month old Zhao Bao who was lucky to be alive because his mother stabbed him 90 times after he bit her while she was breastfeeding him. The world's scariest haunted house, McCammy Manor, requires you to sign a 40 page waiver and mm. undergo a physical and mental evaluation. If you manage to make it through the house, you could win $20,000. But to this day, no one has ever made it through. The little girl who voiced Ooh. Ducky in The Land Before Time was shot to death by her father who then committed suicide. Roman Emperor Nero had a boy castrated, dressed him up as a bride, and married him, all because the boy looked similar to his previous dead wife. 
A 46-year-old man found and attacked a 13-year-old boy because the kid was killing him too many times in a game of Call of Duty. Four scary... That last one takes the kid. Just because he was getting his freaking butt whooped in Call of Duty, he decided to take it to that shame, bro. Can't even play games nowadays, Seekers, man, without somebody trying to hunt you down because they mad at you. That's the word coming to, man. I said, be careful, man. If y'all talking on those call, those Call of Duty lobbies, those are one of the most dangerous places to be in. Facts about knights in Islam. Number one, you die every night. According to this verse of the Holy Quran, every night when you go to sleep, your soul is removed from your body. If it is written that you will live, your soul will return in the morning when you wake up. But if it's written that you will die, your soul will stay with Allah and you will pass away in your sleep. Number two, jinns at night. The barrier between our world and the world of the jinns is weakest at night. This is when jinns and dark creatures cross through, possessing and harming human beings that may still be awake. So if you're up beating your schlong at 3 a.m., watch out. Number three, dogs at night. According to this hadith, if you hear a dog barking at night, seek protection from Allah because they can see what you cannot. And number four, lock your doors at night. According to this hadith, if you lock your doors, shaitan will not be able to enter your home. Be careful at night. We gonna check those out, seekers, man. Dark box and there's one. Scary things you never knew. The last one is shocking. Taylor Swift was one celebrity that said she was concerned with climate change. But funny enough, her private jet emits more carbon in a single trip than your car does in your entire lifetime. Hmm. And that jet has flown over 200 times in the past year. Damn. This is supposedly where you'll be in the next five years. Comment down below what your month says about you. What the United States has about six nuclear weapons that are still missing. And nobody knows where they went or who has them. A man had donated his mother's body to scientific research when she had passed away. The research facility then sold the body to the U.S. Army for $5,000. The Army then strapped it to a chair and blew it up with explosives. Would you rather spend one night in this bathroom or kiss the third person that appears when you click share and then more? If you Google Halloween Google 2022, a scary multiplayer game will pop up that you can play with your friends. Go mm. try it and let me know if it works for you. Before we get to the last scary thing, please support my page by clicking the follow button for more interesting posts every day. Ducks sometimes become cannibals due to boredom. Yeah, they're not so cute now. What's what? worse is this behavior starts as early as four weeks old. What facts surprise you guys the most, man? I think it was about those, those missing news, bro. I'm surprised I make like national news. What the hell is going on? It's insane. Disturbing facts that will ruin your life. The youngest inmate to have died at Kingston Pen, which is Canada's first prison, was mm. nine years old. He died of tuberculosis, and his crime was larceny in 1857. A typical jar of peanut butter contains 10 or more rodent hairs, mm. averaging one or more rodent hairs per 100 grams. Dr. Seuss actually cheated on his wife, Helen Palmer, who was sick with cancer. She what? then killed herself by overdosing on barbiturates. Russia and Pluto have about the same surface area. The two times Snickers bar is really only one and a half Snickers. Mm. At the age of 25 years is when your body stops producing cells faster than it can replace them, meaning your body begins dying very slowly and breaking down. There's a slight chance you could die from spontaneously combusting. Thousands mm. of people die every year due to doctor's sloppy handwriting on prescriptions. Forensic scientists can tell when and sometimes how someone has died by looking at the type of insects that have begun to gather in and around a dead body. Mm. Your eyeballs will flatten soon after you die. Hit the plus sign if you want to learn more facts. The facts, man, that got to you out the most. I think it's how I was saying you could just spontaneously combust. Like, I've never heard any cases like that, man. What the hell is going on in our world where we could just combust spontaneously? Do you ever see a picture that just makes your stomach drop? This is a still from an alert that a woman named Alexis Randall got on her phone. It's from mm. a security camera that was set up in her living room, and she's looking at this, and she's thinking the same thing you are. She's like, what's wrong with the picture here? Why did the motion detector go off? But then look a bit closer, specifically at the bathroom door. This man was staring at the camera from the doorway. She spots this picture Ooh. and she 
immediately panics and calls the police, and by the time they get there, this guy is gone. What really freaked her out even more is that when police got there, they found evidence that the bathroom window had been tampered with. Mm. Further security footage would show that the man had crawled through the bathroom window the night before and was hiding in the hallway bathroom all through the night, even while she was in the house. You can't even see until you zoomed in. I mean, she could probably get charged with child porn. Who she can? She's 11 years old. She's creating it, right? She's 11 years old. Doesn't matter. He's still making porn. No, she's not. She's being manipulated by Brian. Is she taking pictures of him? You guys have a nice seat. Okay. A man who attempted to murder a teenager and left They're gonna arrest that girl if she was making it. It's a miracle that Ashley Reeves survived an attempted murder, but now her attacker is walking free. It was the 29th of April 2006 in Belleville, Illinois. Mm. At around 2 a.m., officers found 17-year-old Ashley Reeves just moments from death. She'd been left in the woods to die for over 30 hours. Paramedics rushed her to hospital and placed her in an induced coma. She was actually in such a bad way that they'd initially thought she was dead. Two days prior to this, Ashley told her parents that she had an interview to attend. She was in a relationship with a boy called Jeremy Smith at the time, and mm. she took his car to drive herself to the interview. When she didn't come home, her parents were extremely worried. They called authorities and began the hunt. Officers later discovered her boyfriend's abandoned car and inside were a change of clothes that Ashley had taken to change into after her interview. That's when they discovered Ashley nearby. Mm. She'd been strangled with a belt and had her neck broken, but miraculously she was still alive. Mm -hmm. Police discovered a man named Samson Shelton was the last person to contact her. He was her teacher and a professional wrestler. They arrested him on suspicion of attempted murder. He changed his story multiple times before eventually admitting to strangling the poor girl. Mm. He said he broke her neck with his arm. He said the pair had gotten into an argument over a relationship they were having. He said they had sex and then after the vicious attack, he had thrown her into the woods. Ooh. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but has recently just been released on parole after serving just 17 years. It truly is a miracle that Ashley managed to survive this attack, and her story was made into a movie named Left for Dead, The Ashley Reeves Story. Disturbing facts from history you wish you didn't know. One of the most horrifying true stories you'll ever hear has to be that of Russia's Cannibal Island. In the summer what? of 1933, thousands of Russian citizens were rounded up by police and sent to live on a tiny swampy island in Siberia's Obu River. Mm. The plan was for the deportees to construct a special settlement as part of Joseph Stalin's new social engineering plan to rid Moscow of all undesirable elements. In May, mm. the first 3,000 prisoners were dropped off by barge on Nazino Island. They were given no tools, food or shelter. These were mostly city dwellers who had no farming experience mm. or any skills for surviving outdoors. In a short time, the weather conditions quickly deteriorated with rain, snow and freezing winds sweeping over the island. Even still, more barges kept coming, dropping off even more people. Guards patrolled the icy waters, threatening to shoot anyone who tried to escape. Mm. For a while, every four or five days, they would drop off sacks of moldy rye flour as the only food source on the island. The inhabitants would take the flour to the river, mix it with water and drink it. Eating it dry was nearly impossible. Mm. Accidentally breathing the flour in its original state could be suffocating. Early on, many people lost their lives by freezing. Some burned alive by sleeping too close to the fires. Others became ill from drinking the brackish water. Things grew far worse for the survivors once starvation set in. Soon, the strongest of the island's prisoners began hunting the weakest members for food. Rumors quickly spread back in Moscow that the island's prisoners had begun eating each other. The experiment ended just 13 weeks after it had begun. Soldiers were sent to evacuate the island. What they found when they got there is beyond a nightmare. Corpses stripped of their flesh littered the tall grass. Skeletal limbs and human organs were discovered hanging from trees. Mm. One woman who had been transferred to another camp was missing her calves. Damn. That's because some of the prisoners cut them off while she was alive. She only survived because the frigid temperatures kept her alive. Of the 6,700 prisoners brought to Nazino Island, 4,000 went missing or were killed. 
the events on Russia's cannibal island were covered up until 1988 when secret records were finally released to the mm. public. That's some dark history, bro. What's the guy? Cannibal Island? What the hell? It's a whole, whole less experiment, man. Makes you think. What well, other stuff is covered up? That we don't know about. Terrifying things that our own government did to us in our past. Here we go. Starting in 1953, the CIA illegally experimented on U.S. and Canadian citizens. Mm -hmm. The project was called MK Ultra, or Operation Mind Control. The government recruited over 80 institutions and over 150 researchers mm -hmm. to do their dirty work for them. They were using biological and chemical agents on their participants. But the worst of all was the LSD experiments. They would use prisoners, methyl patients, and even drug addicts for these experiments. This scene in Stranger Things is actually taken from the MK Ultra experiments, where one patient was given LSD for 174 days in a row. Heroin, morphine, alcohol, marijuana were all used as well. They say that the experiments lasted all the way until 1973. Mm. Some people, like Ken Kesey, actually volunteered for this, which led to the electric Kool-Aid acid test in the 1960s with the... And I think about a change of things. You guys know that scene with L and where she was training and stuff. They said they based it off that I never put two and two together until now. And I was just talking about how, like how some stuff about we don't know what stuff got got, got covered up, man. And, and it's just like coincidence. Next video, next clip, just pulled it up, man. Tap in with us, bro. We learn it. Yeah, so this attention. little boy lost his life by treadmill due to his father. So hmm? this man is currently on trial for this. So I just watched the video, and on the video, the little boy seems to be walking for a long time. The father walks over, speeds up the treadmill while talking to the little boy. Then he speeds it up some more. Then he what? inclines it, and the little boy is struggling. You can see his little legs just going as fast as they can to keep up with the treadmill. Like he's full on sprinting, and at some point, he can't keep up. And he falls off like he just rolls off the treadmill and hits the ground. The father picks him up, tosses him back on the treadmill, what? bites him on top of the head while holding him down on the treadmill and making his feet keep up with the speed. As soon as the father lets him go, he rolls off the treadmill again, bumps his head, hits the floor. He jumps up, gets back on the treadmill, tries to keep up with it again, falls. He repeats this about three or four times. Damn. That's where the father is biting him on the head right there. So eventually the father does slow the treadmill down and he brings the incline down, but he makes the boy continue to run. So the father and the mother does have like some type of joint custody, shared custody type of situation. I guess, and the mother is the first one to report the injuries to child protection, and she tells him to take their son to the hospital when he does. A while at the hospital, that's when the little boy revealed that his father made him run on the treadmill mm -hmm. because he was fat. This little boy is little, even if he was fat. And so the next day when they wake up, the little boy is stumbling, he's slurring his words, he's nauseous, so he does rush into the hospital mm -hmm. and while they're getting a ct scan the little boy has a seizure and they have to take life preventing measures and they were unsuccessful the little boy did pass away now the autopsy revealed that there were blunt force injuries it was cardiac and liver contusions sepsis it was lacerations on his heart and liver now if you go to youtube and watch the video because his father is currently on trial and it shows the video y'all see how hard this little boy kept hitting that treadmill when he fall and mm. the way his dad would put him back on there you will see why he had the injuries that he had and they have offered the father a 30-year plea deal and he turned it down they got footage i'm glad he turned it down he's gonna get even more time things yeah. humans were never meant to see man transforms into real werewolf okay let's see see nothing yet
kind of iffy, man. You believe in seekers? This has to be like a well put together edit, right? look like edited to me i don't know man like i said tell me down below guys if you guys believe that you guys want me to check into that man that looks freaking <laughs> weird but okay <laughs> guys if you guys stay with me to the end of the video you're a true seeker seeking the truth i really appreciate the support man like i said guys subscribe to the channel hit that post notification but hit that like button man also man like i said guys i need you guys to follow me on my social medias man if you guys want me to react to different tiktoks and clips you guys follow me on my social medias and you guys can send it to me in my dms so i can incorporate them into the next video if you guys want me trying to because i know how you can said you guys want me to switch it up so i need you guys support man like i said just follow me on my social medias and send me the videos in my dms and i can incorporate that for the next video so we can help each other out man like I said, we're going to grow our community together. You guys going to catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, man, we break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook videos, man. Anything weird, usual, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel just want to thank you guys for the support who's been tapping into the channel subscribing hitting that post notification bell hitting that like button man i really appreciate the support it allows me to put back in at the channel and um yeah that's what we do best seekers let's seek the truth what we got today this is why you should fear for your life if you buy or sell items on Facebook Marketplace. 56-year-old mm -hmm. Denise Williams of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, wanted to buy a refrigerator for her boyfriend. She found one listed on Facebook Marketplace. The seller was 26-year-old Joshua Gorgon. Denise went to his apartment alone to check out the fridge but never came out. On Monday, she was reported missing by her family, and police were able to track her using her phone and information from a Facebook account. Mm. She was found dead from multiple stab wounds at Joshua's apartment. Joshua was arrested and charged with criminal homicide. When he was interviewed by Cambria County detectives, he admitted to stabbing Williams to death with a kitchen knife following an argument over the cost of the refer- The mystery of Kate Young is- that right there, man, is exactly what if you guys gonna meet up somebody to buy something like online from marketplace or something like that, always make sure it's in a public area. Never meet them at their house or a location of their choosing, man. You have to do it in a public meetup, a public setting, because you never know what could happen, man. Like you said, they were disputing over the price and look what that turned out. Never go to that to a person's place, man. Especially if you're buying something offline, online? No still very much unexplained. Kate Yup was a YouTuber who would make mukbang videos where she would eat excessive amounts of food. These were not normal videos. Kate was eating aggressively fast, almost like she was being starved or she was forced. She also wears a blindfold in every video, so her identity is completely unknown. But viewers became seriously concerned when they started to notice warning signs that Kate might be under someone's control. There are indicators that there was somebody else in that room with her while she's eating all of this food. You could hear him breathing in the 
background of her videos. She's eating so fast that in one video she actually chips her teeth and when she shows it to the camera, these are teeth that are rotted. But the most compelling evidence to support that Kate Yup could be a victim of trafficking are the cryptic messages that she's left in the text editing of her videos. Since this all kind of blew up in the media, the channel has gone totally dark and there hasn't been a new video in a year. Barbie has a yep. much creepier yeah, check that than out. I thought. I'm going to show you some theories about Barbie that have been keeping me up at night. And I cover all sorts of creepy and true crime stuff, so follow along. In 2010, Barbie released a doll that had a camera on her necklace as well as a video screen on her back. Come again? This doll has since been discontinued, but there's a lot of rumors about what happened to this footage when it was recorded. So people have always theorized that the footage was collected and sold either by Mattel or by someone more nefarious. And it's been mentioned how easy it would have been for hackers to collect and sell all this data. Mm. The FBI even put out a statement about it. Barbie also released and discontinued the Hello doll, which could listen to children and respond with over 8,000 pre-recorded answers. A lot of parents worried that these dolls were potentially recording their children and then selling that data. But this doll also has really concerning reviews. Mm. Like people say that the doll won't take no for an answer. Like if she asked if you wanted to hear a story and then you said no, she would actually push back and then just tell you the story anyways. What? And the doll would also ask really chunky? specific and targeted questions about children, like how big their families were and if they had any siblings. Was this doll just collecting market data on children or was it something much weirder? No one could work out much why this weirder. child kept getting sick. So doctors took a look at the cameras that were set up in the room and what they saw gave them chills. Nine days after Garrett Spears was born, he was ad admitted to hospital. Since then, Lacey Spears would care for her son through a myriad of illnesses. No mm. one could figure out why young Garrett kept getting sick. Lacey, the dutiful single mother, would document his illnesses online. She created an online blog where she would chronicle her struggles and document her struggles to find a cure for whatever illness Garrett had. In 2014, Gareth, age 5, was rushed to hospital. Doctors again couldn't quite work out what made him sick, but they were able to treat his symptoms and he made a full recovery. Doctors were gearing up to discharge him. However, within a few short hours, Gareth took a turn for the worst, and without warning, he sadly passed away. The hospital staff were devastated, but very confused as to what had happened. So they did a blood test, and that's where they found something very disturbing. Garrett had deadly levels of sodium in his blood. He had been suffering from sodium poisoning, which meant someone was poisoning him. So when hooked up to certain machines in the hospital, there are cameras. They took a look at those cameras, and they saw what was happening. Okay. His mother, Lacey, had been poisoning him with sea salt. Lacey was arrested. She was diagnosed with Munchausen's syndrome by proxy and she was sentenced to 25 years my name's halves and i tell 17 crime story for more remember to follow this is some honest. clout people have to be better man when clout comes into the picture they just lose all sense of morality never fails man clout is one of the most dangerous drugs there's out there nowadays yo and shoot g word in the back 12 times killing him instantly. With her son-in-law's body on the kitchen floor, Cynthia went on with her birthday celebrations, first mm -hmm. going to a local cafe for breakfast, then to a casino, and finally to her favorite coffee shop, where she was brought into questioning by police. And what followed is an interrogation that would make anyone's blood curl. I'm sorry. I'm so Come here. Sorry. Come here. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to put handcuffs on just for now. Where's the map? just stabbed and killed her nine-year-old brother. She's seen crying and apologizing to police and her mother repeatedly. This will take place on Friday night in Oklahoma. Just sit there for a second. You don't have the knife on you, right? No, I swear I don't. I'm sorry. sorry. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. It'll be nighttime and the one parent will be sleeping upstairs when the 12-year-old daughter would stab her nine-year-old brother repeatedly in the chest. She then would go upstairs to wake up her parents to inform them of what she had just done. I only love this in my room and I threw it out the window and it's not in the apartment right here. You threw it where? I threw it out my window upstairs. Right not here. not right there. It's the room. It's the other room. It's right behind the apartment. This apartment right here. And the young girl will be taken into custody and is currently being held at the Family Center for Juvenile Justice. The hell are you do that?
see how we're looking around. So this is death row inmate Taylor yeah, Parker, who went to extreme lengths to cover up her lies. She even killed a pregnant woman in order to steal the baby from her womb just to prove she was really pregnant. So a picture here we have Taylor and her boyfriend Wade and what appears to be a baby bump. Well, what later is found out is just an actual prosthetic baby bump, mm -hmm. not a real one. She was covering up this entire time, pretending to be pregnant so that Wade would not leave her. It's now, she couldn't have gotten pregnant because she had a hysterectomy several years earlier, but Wade was unaware of this. Mm. Well, that's where Reagan comes into play because Reagan actually was pregnant around the same time that Taylor said she was pregnant. And she knew Reagan because she had been a photographer at Reagan's wedding. Now, Taylor's perpetrating this lie the entire time. So even she's holding a gender reveal party and going to ultrasound, sending fake images to her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. He never gets to go into the doctor's office. She keeps telling him, oh, sorry, it's COVID. You're not allowed to go back there. So he begins to grow a little suspicious of the whole thing, especially after when the day she was supposed to be induced, his house catches on fire and a bomb threat at the hospital they were supposed to be induced at occurs. Mm -hmm. And then she becomes three weeks late on her pregnancy. That's when Wade's mother pulls him aside and says, you know, I actually think you're onto something. She's probably not pregnant. Wade confronts mm. her once again about the whole thing, and she says, watch, I'm going to get induced at a hospital in Oklahoma, and you will see. So Friday, she sets up an appointment to be induced. So that morning, Wade actually goes to a hog sale because he was supposed to go down to this sale about four hours from their house, come back, drive her to the hospital, and watch the baby be induced. Well... Um, ends up being that he goes there and it was a false. There, she had set this up for him to actually go to this hog hunt so she could go see Reagan and murder her, and she does. Sadly, she goes over to her friend's house, attacks her, stabs her with a scalpel that she had over a hundred times while her little daughter is standing right there. Then she cuts open her stomach and extracts the baby from it and rushes towards the hospital. She gets pulled over for speeding and says, hey, look, I just had this baby. It's unresponsive. Help me, help me. She had actually tucked the umbilical cord into her pants to make it look like the baby was still attached to her. But the hospital staff begins to grow suspect that she refuses to be checked at all. And the baby shows up dead. And they actually heard that there was a baby that was abducted from another murder victim after the mother of Reagan showed up and found her daughter with 100 stab wounds. Sadly, at court, all of this web of lies comes out. Reagan and the baby were killed. She was sentenced to murder and sentenced to death in Texas, where she currently sits on death row awaiting execution. So, update on your life. One of the most freaking bizarre cases man, we heard, man. And it just goes to prove when a person is lying, man, they're spinning those webs, how they would just try to do anything to cover it up. Like, she went to the extremes. That's because, like I said, the boyfriend and the boyfriend moms were catching on to, hey, like, you probably not pregnant. Like, you's on to something. And look what she did. Lies can be one of the most dangerous, unpredictable people in the world. Seekers. Like Teacher Lee's case, if you didn't know, a lot of people that went to school with her are starting to speak out on social media outlets, and the Daily Mail just published an article on Saturday. So the headline reads, she was a master manipulator. Alexi Trevizo knew she was pregnant and had even picked out the name Alex for her baby boy, but hid it from everyone. So what the students told Daily Mail is that around mid-November, students already started to speculate if she was pregnant or not, which she was denying all the rumors. Even her cheer coach had asked her if she was pregnant, but she said that it was the pill, which is why she gained so much weight. But she obviously looked pregnant. I mean, she was actually pregnant, but they felt that they couldn't keep asking her because it was just gonna make them look wrong as they were giving her the benefit of the doubt that maybe she was just gaining lots of weight and when the news broke back in january that someone had discarded their baby in the hospital people already started to suspect that it was alexi so the students did explain that after the news had broke out both alex and devon were gone for a couple of weeks which they were able to put two and two together and when they
they came back, Alex at one point had the audacity to write a poem called People Talk, basically addressing all the rumors that were going on about her. What? The reason they also said they couldn't just come out and talk about what was actually happening is because the school was threatening them if they were to talk, they were going to be suspended and not be able to participate in the graduation ceremony. Mm. She is currently out on a $100,000 bail and awaiting trial on September 11th. Oh my god, you People guys, talking about the truth. the biggest story in true crime today, it. or it, it probably will be for the next week. Did you guys see that someone confessed to the murder of John JonBenet Ramsey? For my younger followers, this is John JonBenet Ramsey. She was killed in her home December 27, 1996. Hmm. She was a six-year-old little girl. Um, she lived in Boulder, Colorado, and someone came in the middle of the night, it was presumed, and kidnapped her. Now, it has been long speculated that the parents were involved. So they said they woke up and there was a ransom note. They were very well off. And I've heard theories also that the son was involved. He was roughly her age, maybe a couple mm -hmm. years older than her. So like I said, she was killed on December 26, 1996. Now on December 27, 1996, this was a huge national story. Now before the story came became known as widely as it was, the Boulder police received a tip that someone had gotten a phone call from mm. a friend that he hadn't spoken to in years saying that he was scared. He hurt a little girl in Boulder, Colorado. Now, authorities never looked into this or questioned the guy, but the guy in question was Gary Oliva. And this is a picture of him at the one year anniversary at the Jean Benet Ramsey vigil. <sighs> this was a picture taken by a private investigator hired by John Ramsey, which was Jean Benet's father. Um, he gave them this information and they never looked into it further. Wow. So again, like all my videos, what is going on with the justice system in this country? So they never looked into it, never questioned this guy. But four years later in 2000, this guy was arrested with, uh, relating to CSA. I can't really say it on TikTok, but you get the idea. He was arrested in 2000, at which point he wrote, more letters, confession letters to this friend that lived in California. Mm. Okay, so fast forward to 2016, this guy gets arrested yet again, and cops find pictures of Jean Monnet on his phone, and the CSA charges that he was being arrested for multiple times, and the multiple tips from this guy that he had called and said, I'm scared, I hurt this girl, were never looked into. What? What? Again? Today we're going to be talking about a murderer How? and a serial wow, rapist system. by the name of Mr. Cruel, who a few decades ago was Australia's most wanted and was also known as the Boogeyman of Australia. Mm. So according to various sketches, this is what Mr. Cruel looked like. And between 1987 mm. and 1991, he broke into three homes of three Australian parents, and then he would bound the parents and take their daughters. On the morning of August 22, 1987, a masked man broke into a quiet home in the suburbs in Melbourne, Australia. He forced both parents onto their stomachs and then bound them. And then he locked them in a closet as he proceeded to rape their 11-year-old daughter. He cut the phone lines and then he left after assaulting the daughter. Mm. When the police first heard about this case, they were trying to figure out what happened and asked the parents. The parents then said that the attacker came into their house with a gun and a knife and tied them in knots which can only be known by sailors. So this gave the police a hint as to who he could be. But because he was wearing a mask, he was unable to be identified. The little girl who was attacked then told the police that he had made a phone call and told the person on the phone call to move their children and also called him a bozo. But when the police looked into it, they found no record of any phone call. This was just something that Mr. Cruel did to throw the police off his case. He was doing this to purposely confuse investigators. And that's when he went for his second victim, Sharon Wills, who was 10 years old. Just days after Christmas in 1988, John Wills, his wife, and their four daughters were asleep. Mm. And this house was a couple of miles away from where the first crime took place. Wearing dark blue overalls and a dark ski mask, Mr. Cruel came back. He held a gun to the father's head, and just like the previous crime, rolled the parents onto the stomachs and bound them and gagged them. He knew Sharon Will's name and woke her up. He then blindfolded her, gagged her, and took her away, and fled the house with some of her clothing the next morning. By the time the father got help, it was too late. Mr. Cruel was gone and so was Sharon Will's. 
But 18 hours later, a woman stumbled upon her. She was dressed in a green garbage bag, standing on the street a quarter after midnight. Because she was blindfolded throughout the assault, she couldn't give much information to the police. But Mr. Cruel made sure to wash her body and cut her fingernails and floss her teeth, so there was no forensic evidence available. He then told her that he was the boogeyman. But this was just the beginning of Mr. Cruel's attacks. He then proceeded to attack another girl and murder and attack one more. Hmm. Running out of time, so I'm gonna have to make a part two, but make sure you check it out. This is one of the most high-profile pedophiles in Hollywood, Jeffrey Jones. You might recognize Jeffrey from a number of movies he's been in, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, The Hunt for Red October, and Beetlejuice. It's highly ironic to me that in a lot of the movies he was in, Jeffrey Jones played the villain, and he ended up being one in real life. So after his career flourished in the late 80s and 90s, let's fast forward to 2002. That year, Jeffrey was arrested for the possession of CP, if you know what I'm talking about, and he was accused by a 17-year-old boy of soliciting him to take nude photos. These charges get even more disturbing when you realize that the young boy who accused Jeffrey of soliciting him to take nude photographs was 14 when the charges were originally brought up and the accusations were made. Jeffrey pleaded no contest to the solicitation. He openly admitted that he had done this horrible thing. But once again, because of legal loopholes, because he admitted to this and pled no contest, that meant that the other CB charges were completely dropped. No way. And what happened to Jeffrey after all this? Well, he got five years probation. He also had to go through counseling and register as a sex offender. And yes, if you're wondering, to this day, he is still registered as a sex offender. You can find the records of all of this online. Mm. But it seems like Jeffrey didn't want to be known as a sex offender throughout his life. But it seems like Jeffrey didn't want to be known as a sex offender for the rest of his life. And he would end up being okay. arrested twice for failing to update his sex offender registration. And in 2006, when working on the set of the movie, Who's Your Caddy? The community of Aiken, South Carolina, where the film was being filmed, complained to the government and complained that a sex offender was on set. This was due to the fact that families had been invited to visit the set with their children, and they had no idea that there was a predator lurking amongst the crew. To, know. to this day, a lot of people don't know what this guy has done, and even Justin Bieber posted a photo with him a couple years back, and a mm. lot of people were obviously a little mad about that. And I think it's important to realize that these people are everywhere. They're your friends, your family, your neighbors. They're even celebrities. And at the end of the day, even the people that you look up to and have seen a million times on the silver screen could be the worst people you've ever met in real life. If you like these types of stories, give me a follow or listen to my wife and I's podcast, Murder in America. Like you said, man, it's always, it seems like it's always somebody in Hollywood or famous in that room that has that, that problem, man. Y'all know the beef that's going on with freaking Jake and Kendrick Lamar right now. You know what, what Kendrick said? I even dropping disses and about hitting about certain stuff. It's like it's it's crazy. It's a rampant problem in Hollywood, man. Or when it involves famous people, they never. We don't know if it's true or not. It's not confirmed, but it's just crazy how it's always like someone in that room or something like that. That's just something to think about. I know if Amanda was alive, she'd be a Patreon member. Thank God for true crime. What would? It Here's the thing. I enjoy listening to some true crime podcasts. I like when they're mysteries and there's like an investigation involved. I honestly like them when a journalist does it and they're in tandem with the family and the family knows about it, so they're kind of working on it together. Like, there's a lot of good examples. There's someone knows something. A um, uh, uh, crime junkie, although not a great name. My favorite podcast of all time is um, the last podcast on the left. They don't do all true crime. They do a bunch of other stuff, too. But, like, when they do true crime, they're really good at, like, demystifying, like, these serial killers. Like, oh, they did and They're like, no, they're losers. So I really appreciate that. Ooh. But anyway, someone recommended my favorite murder, and I listened to an episode, and I was like, no. First of all, the first half was just, like, 40 minutes of them doing bits between them. And I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to be a true crime podcast, don't you do research and stuff? They did very little research, like, they infantilized, like, the victims. Like, it, it, it was just really uncomfortable to listen to. So I checked their Instagram, and I'm like, how popular are these guys? And they have a lot, a lot of followers. Really? And they either posted or reposted a picture. I don't think it was them specifically, but um, of someone doing a true crime party. And in my head, I'm like, no, there's no way they're doing, like, actual victims of crimes. Like, they... They would, they're probably doing, like, movie things or, like, Sherlock Holmes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, it was actual cases what? of actual people, and they came dressed up. And one of them was dressed up as a pageant queen, a pa like a toddlers and tiaras kind of person. Like, mm. the full pageant, like, the crown and everything. 
because she was impersonating a girl named John Benet Ramsey, who uh, was murdered in 1997, who was six. And they, like, reposted it. Like, at what point of delusion are you doing that? Like, that is, that's genuinely disgusting. And they're really popular. Guys, again, I would just be, like, considerate of your consumption. Like, there are a lot of, like, true crime podcasts that, like, work very closely with victims and, like, raise a lot of money. Like, uh, Crime Junkie, like, started a project where they actually um, identified two unidentified people um, because they raised enough donations to get the DNA testing for them, which was like, oh, it was amazing. It was like, oh, okay, you're doing something. Not doing bits and not dressing as, like, a child victim for a party. And last podcast on the left is a lot of, like, alien episodes and Bigfoot episodes. Those are my favorite. That's actually insane. Truly. That's one of the first time I heard about it. A true calm party where they dress up as the... Who even thought of that idea who even thought hey let's have a true calm party and we dress up as the, as the victims knowing what they went through y'all know the story the background behind it and y'all throwing a party dressing up as them like they don't think how that could like affect the family members and stuff stuff like that like what happens if somebody found out i guess in their family man that they're having a party and they're dressing up as a victim that's not funny that's not even a great idea a fun idea who the hell even thought that up man People nowadays, bro, I'm trying to tell you, they don't think before they act, before they do things like this, man. It's crazy. The things people do, man. But as a form of entertainment, we got to be better. Everybody, man. All around. <sighs> you guys, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a true seeker seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support, guys. Like I said, if you guys subscribe to the channel, Hit that post notification, man. Hit that like button, man. We're growing. I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, I know we can grow our community. The seekers it's just something special. I just need you guys' help to do to follow those three simple steps, man. We're golden. Like I said, man, we've been daily uploading, man, every single day, man. I'm planning to do the same thing um, this month. Hopefully, I want you guys to stick with me through the journey. Like I said, I've been trying to upgrade the channels. Like I said, tell me man, also down below if you guys like my new reacting style, man. As you guys can see, I'm really, I'm pausing way less. I'm trying to limit the two or three pauses, maybe throughout like the whole video and just save my thoughts until after and kind of speak on it. I'll really only pause like through the video if it's like really important, if it's something I really have to get off my chest. But tell me if you guys like this new style. I'm trying to bring the best entertainment for you guys also, man. Like I said, send me videos you guys want to react to. If you guys, I know you have been saying, y'all don't want to see the same thing. So if you guys can send me the videos that's why i say follow me on my social medias because you guys send me the videos i can put them i can like compile the clips into the next video so i need you guys to follow my social medias as well i'm out peace secrets what's up youtube welcome back to the channel how you guys doing hopefully you guys are doing all right man if you guys are brand new to your channel and you guys don't know what we do we break down scary and creepy videos man on and there, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, man, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank you guys, man, who's been um, tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting the post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. We're growing the community, the seekers together. So I really appreciate your support, man. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this new update on um, my new reacting style. Find this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best. I seek the truth. This is the Hello Kitty murder case, and it's one of the most gruesome true crime stories you may ever hear about. Mm. This happened in 1999, and Fan here was abducted by three men and a girl. Fan Man Yu was then held inside of a flat that one of the killers rented out for about a month. She was tortured and beaten, and they even tried to pimp her out. And apparently, she was hung up and used as a punching bag. Mm. They even went as far as burning up her legs so that she couldn't even walk. She also had no real food to eat. They forced her to eat human feces. After that immense stress her body went through, she died after a little over a month being held captive there. This is where things get even crazier. They cut up her body, dismembered her completely, and then cooked up her head. They then stuffed her half-cooked head into a Hello Kitty mermaid doll. Investigators found this and found many insects inside of it as well. The rest of her dismembered body was discarded somewhere, 
The only pieces of evidence the investigators found was the skull inside of the Hello Kitty doll, some teeth on the ground, and organs in the freezer. Reading this story makes me just feel so horrible for Fan Manny and the torture she went through. This is definitely the worst true crime case I've ever read about, and then there are just so many more details I can't even say. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comment section below, and as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. This is definitely one of the darkest cases I've ever heard. This is 20-year-old Emma Breakdown from St. Louis, Missouri. On April 15th of this year, Emma was with her son when she slapped his leg and put her hand over his nose and mouth. Mm. Obviously, this was preventing him from breathing. Emma decided to record this incident and send it to a friend. What the she also recorded another video of her covering her son's face with a blanket in her hand. This caused the boy to cry and grab at the blanket. When she sent that video to her friend, she also sent a handful of text messages. First text said, I don't know, when I do that, I feel an adrenaline rush. Yeah, she's the next weird. text said, I stopped right before he dies, last time he was blue. Damn. The last twisted text she sent said, I really want to unalive him, but I don't want to go to jail. It's unfortunate, but he's just going to have to pay for his existence. The boy ended up surviving his wounds, and now someone else is taking care of him. Emma was arrested and charged with abuse or neglect of a child. Yeah, she should. She remains in jail without bond. The most disturbing oh, cults in history, man. part one. These are the Ant Hill Kids, founded by this man, Rock Therio, in Quebec, Canada. These mm. events took place throughout the 70s and 80s. Using his excellent charismatic skills, he actually convinced a group of people to quit their jobs and follow him, promising unity and equality. He forbid them contact with their family and moved them out to the mountains. He awesome. called it Eternal Mountain. In 1978, he prepared for Doomsday, having his followers build a town that could save them. He relaxed while they worked and compared them to ants on an anthill. To gain more followers and keep them devoted, he impregnated mm. all female members. Yeah. They were also forced to wear the same outfit, promoting equality. Those are some dangerous people, man, who can, like, control and manipulate you like that. And just make you go against your family. Those are some dangerous people, man. Definitely gonna have to stay away from them. Isn't that Prince Harry? She didn't look like she was smiling. Fake relationship? What? It's a facade? Is that what they're trying to tell us? You know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with the um, boy family. It wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Add it. Gotta call it out like a serious. Here's some morbid facts about the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Following the radiation leak, there are an estimated 150,000 abortions across Eastern Europe due to radiophobia. Oh. Many parents didn't want their babies to be born with mutations, even though the risk for most was quite low. Vasily Ignatenko was one of the first firemen to respond to the nuclear leak. After being exposed, he suffered in constant excruciating pain for 18 days before dying. He reportedly excreted blood more than 25 times per day and coughed up pieces of his own organs in those final days. Mm. When Pripyat was abandoned, people weren't allowed to bring their pets with them. Instead, firing squads were sent door to door to shoot pet cats and dogs so that they wouldn't transfer the radiation. Mm. Local ranchers noticed a dramatic increase in the genetic mutations of their animals following the leak. Some of the abnormalities included extra limbs and body parts in the wrong locations. It's been more than four decades since the Chernobyl accident, but experts estimate that Pripyat will remain uninhabitable for another 20,000 years. This is the first day my Barbie became alive. It was trying to walk, so I helped it. I made a huge mistake. My Barbie is learning to talk in Ohio now. That's weird. Barbie's alive? Mm -hmm. Two of the foremost haunted dolls in the world. The first is the Annabelle doll, which inspired the Conjuring movies, which, as you guys know, is one of the most haunted dolls in the world. She's able to not only move herself, but also move objects, and is supposedly inhabited by an extremely demonic being, forcing her to constantly be in a spirit box. Mm -hmm. Then have Ruby, 
which in my opinion is one of the most terrifying due to the fact that it's a porcelain doll, which all of our mothers and grandmothers have. Ruby doesn't do anything crazy, but the scariest part is supposedly the ancestor who had this doll prior passed while holding this doll, and now supposedly Ooh. inhabits it. And it's a porcelain doll, which makes it absolutely terrifying. Then have Letta, who's a 200-year-old doll found underneath a house in Australia, said to make noises in the night, moved by itself. And the owner has a specific account of when he was moving, he heard this doll scream while being in the trunk, screaming, let me out. Mm -hmm. I'm good on everything that. Then you have Robert the doll, who in my opinion is probably the most haunted and cursed doll on this list. Said to be so cursed that if you take a picture or look at him without his permission, he can curse you. And this has happened to multiple people who decided to film Robert without his permission. This doll mm -hmm. not only moves by itself, the previous owner has made multiple statements of hearing this doll run inside of the attic. On top of that, the neighbors have seen Robert pee peeking out the window in the second story while no one was up there. These dolls, they're, they're scary. I'm not a dolls person, bro. <laughs> I gotta keep the dolls away from me, man. They're just creepy to me. Was that doll alive though the last one? Did we believe that, Seekers? Have you guys heard of the night lady? This all started in Chihuahua, Mexico, 2009. Residents started noticing something really disturbing. You see, now some of the children in the area were going missing. I gotta grab some food for this one. Look at this beautiful roll. Mm. Now with all the children around the area going missing, people started reporting seeing a woman. They said she would climb on the rooftops <laughs> during the day, only to wait till night to sneak in through the window what? to snatch children. Police then sketched an image of what they believed to be the night lady. Only one child has been reported of actually escaping the night lady. You see, his parents had ran into the room and caught her just in time. She quickly then escaped and crawled out of the window. Wait, before I continue, let's say the night lady had taken you. Your third at has to come and save you. Who is it? Let me know who it is. Anyways, the kid that got away recounted waking up in the middle of the night and seeing the night lady standing over top of him just watching. Him. People have brushed this off as just one big hoax. And so yeah. after midnight, a teenage girl had captured this photo. This is supposedly the night lady. Okay. Gotta believe when the kids are saying This man. is the scariest story about I'm sorry, mommy. One night, a woman was in the kitchen reading a newspaper when she suddenly looked up and saw her six-year-old son staring at her. Mm. She said, something wrong, dear? I had a nightmare, said the boy, and I can't sleep. Well, don't worry, you're safe now, said the mother. I dreamed I was in bed and heard a sound in daddy's room, he said. And when I looked in the door, I saw two big black things with white eyes. It came out of the closet and it attacked daddy. Don't worry, said the mother in a soothing voice. It was just a dream. It didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. The boy then continued saying they ripped him into pieces and then ate him after. And they even licked the blood off the floor. I thought if I ran away, they wouldn't catch me, but they did. They were going to eat me, but they stopped and said, They wouldn't eat me if I promised to... To what? said the mother. Promise to distract you while they creep up behind you. I'm sorry, mommy, said the boy, as the mother heard the floorboards behind her creak. The boy then watched with enjoyment as his mother was ripped apart piece by piece, with a giant smile on his face. This is the most terrifying McDonald's you'll ever see. In 1986, the first floating McDonald's called the McBarge opened up. The plan was for the boat to travel around the world and for people to enjoy McDonald's everywhere. Mm. But then something crazy happened. The five employees that lived on the boat went crazy. They started to hear voices at night and even began hallucinating. All of this slowly started driving them insane. After three years of this, one fry cook decided enough was enough. She decided to end her life. Her body was discovered on this very boat the next morning. The McDonald's were forced to close and was even abandoned for over 20 years. It seemed like everyone forgot about this floating nightmare. This was the case until two years ago when a company decided to renovate the boat. Mm -hmm. And this article was published about renovating the boat. But a year later, there was still no news about it. And the McBarge was still abandoned. But then a couple of YouTubers decided to swim and break into the McBarge. As they went around, everything was eerily silent. Black can fall off a part two. Yeah, yeah, that didn't even make it like national news. You would think something like that would. Right, Seekers? A floating McDonald's? Yeah, we ain't heard nothing about that. Why is that? We gotta put our thinking caps on for that one. This girl killed her mom and then texted a photo of her body to her dad. In 2013, Rachel Hudson and her family were supposed to be celebrating Thanksgiving at their home in Virginia. However, the holiday would take a horrendously sinister turn. Rachel's mom was terminally ill 58-year-old Susan Lee. 
Rachel had been her mum's carer since she was just nine years old. Oh. On the evening in question, Rachel and her dad got into an argument. When her dad left the house the next day to make the most of the Black Friday sales, Rachel did something unthinkable. Mm. She took a weapon out of the wardrobe and loaded it. She apparently thought about unaliving herself at this point, but she didn't want to put her mum through the trauma of finding her body. Mm. She then walked into the room where her mum was and said, I'm sorry, this is what has to happen. Her mum apparently told her, you're crazy, and this is the point where Rachel killed her mum. When she texted her dad to break the news to him, he obviously didn't believe what she was saying. She then took a photo of her mum's body and texted it over to her dad. Rachel was sentenced initially to 50 years in prison, but this was reduced to 18 years because of an apparent undiagnosed mental illness. Mm -hmm. This is the scariest Imagine song in the world, and here's message, why. Man. Okay, so we all heard this song before, especially if you're into scary things and watch the insidious movies. But do you know the very disturbing and chilling backstory behind this song? Mm -hmm. Well, the song is called Tiptoe Through the Tulips and it was recorded and released in 1968 by American singer Tiny Tim. Alright. And when the song was first released, it didn't have the scary reputation it has now. However, this would change during his last ever live performance of the song. On September 28, 1996, Tiny Tim suffered a heart attack that was pretty miniature while performing at a music festival. Mm. And after this happened, his doctors advised him that he wasn't healthy enough to perform on stage anymore. Mm. However, Tiny Tim ignored the advice from his doctors and scheduled another concert at a women's club in Minnesota the next month. But right before his performance, he told his wife that he wasn't feeling that good. Nevertheless, Tiny Tim decided to go on stage anyway. And after performing the last song of the night, he suffered a major, major heart attack on stage and died in front of the crowd. Mm. And the song he was performing was Tiptoe Through the Tulips. This song was already terrifying, but it's 100 times more terrifying after knowing this. Now listen to it again after knowing this. It's a different vibe. Shows and movies using that no one happened, man. There's always a dark story. On March 19th, 2024, in Mississippi, 14 year old Carly Gregg made a phone call to one of her friends saying, quote, Do you want to see a body? Moments after making the call, Carly's stepfather walked into the home to see his wife, Ashley Smiley, unalive from wounds. Ashley was a loved individual who friends and family claimed she was a quote, loving and caring teacher who wanted the best for her students. When her stepfather entered the home, at the same moment Carly pulled out a and in the midst of the struggle, he was able to successfully disarm her, leaving Carly to escape the home going on the run. It did not take police long to find and arrest her, and in most cases, children will be tried as a juvenile, but in Carly's case, she'll be tried as an adult for the unaliving of her mother and the attempted unaliving of her stepfather. From what I read on Reddit, people seem to be split 50-50 as they believe she should not be tried as an adult. What are your thoughts? Why does she even do that, man? That's the real question you need to be asking. The story behind it. Need details on that case, Seekers. I'm alone and you hear a knock, don't answer the door. That was my grandmother's one rule when she left me the family house. Mm. I thought it was just the rantings of an old woman. I didn't know how real the rule was until the other night. The house I inherited was deep in the forest. Far from bustling city noises. Silence was the unspoken language here. Except sometimes you would hear the owls. But the other night when I was sitting in the living room reading a book, that's when I heard it. There was a single knock at the front door. And then I remembered my grandmother's warning. If you're home alone and you hear one knock, don't answer the door. I looked over at my grandfather clock in the corner. It was midnight. I told myself that the knock was just a figment of my imagination. It was just the house settling or a fallen branch against mm. the door. But then it came again, a single solitary knock. But this time it sounded closer. I was panicking, I just stood there staring at the door. The third knock was so loud that it made the door rattle. There was no more denying it. Something was at the door. If you see Definitely this happen, store. you need to run. 
fast. If you see these orange dots on a tree in the woods, you seriously need to run fast. It might just look like orange paint, but don't be fooled, this is a trap. There have been loads of reports of missing people in these types of woods. So if you see these orange markings in the woods, you need to run fast. Make sure you share this message and follow for more. Why the hell was he there? He risking his life. Now this video has got the internet going crazy because a guy in Melbourne, Australia is quite literally claiming that his dog was playing with a ghost. And after watching this, I bloody believe him. Now he insists that his backyard is fully secured and locked by a high fence where there is no way for another dog to get in. He also said that he ran outside to check if he hadn't lost the plot and that the ghost dog was nowhere to be seen. And if this video hasn't got you contemplating life, another video which has scarred me for life is this bastard. Now keep your eyes on the collar of the black dog on the right. So as you can see, the two dogs are just barking and barking and then suddenly, out of nowhere, for some reason, they just go completely quiet. A few seconds later, the black dog then randomly jerks backwards into the side of the crate and its collar comes off of its own accord. Is that an edit or was that real? Have you ever wondered why Domino's dropped their Noid mascot back in the 90s? Just like how McDonald's has Ronald McDonald and Burger King had the King, Domino's had the Noid. First created in 1986, the slogan was avoid the Noid as he would try to thwart pizza deliveries. Mm -hmm. And the Noid loves to move pizza. It's whole Domino's pizza. We avoid the Noid. But this all changed for Domino's on January 30th, 1989. Okay. On that day, Kenneth Lamar Noid took two Domino's pizza employees hostage with a 357 Magnum in Georgia. Now, the entire ordeal lasted about five hours, and his demands were $10,000, a getaway car, and a copy of the book, The Widow's Son. He also demanded the employees make him a pizza. While he was enjoying the pizza, they managed to escape, and no one was hurt. Mm. Kenneth was arrested and charged with kidnapping, aggravated assault and theft by extortion. So what exactly did the Domino's Noid have to do with Kenneth Noid? Yeah. He had become convinced that the ads were directly aimed at him, with his last name being Noid and the ad saying, avoid the Noid. One of the arresting officers at the scene said that he was having an ongoing feud in his mind. Believing that the commercials were made to mock him, he fully believed that the owner of Domino's Pizza was telling people to avoid him. Avoid the noise! Avoid the noise! Avoid the noise! Now, he was charged but found not guilty due to reasons of insanity and was sent to a Georgia mental health clinic. Mm. Domino's continued on as normal until another incident in 1995. Still convinced that the pizza chain was out to get him, Kenneth took his own life in his Florida apartment. Following this, the pizza chain immediately stopped using the Noid in their marketing campaigns. Since then, the Noid has made a few smaller appearances on t-shirts, in pinball machines, in a video game, and a small snippet in an ad. Now, in 2021, Domino's released an ad showcasing their new driverless delivery vehicles. Mm -hmm. The ad showing off that the Noid is back, but he has not been seen since that ad. This true crime case will make your blood boil. Over a decade ago, 19-year-old Kara Nichols vanished. The teenager was born and raised in Colorado Springs and unfortunately had begun using substances throughout high school. She was reported missing on the 14th of October, 2012. At this point, her roommates hadn't heard from her for five days. Mm. Police soon learned that she'd actually spoken to her brother on the phone on the 9th of October at around 11.45 p.m. Mm. She told him that she was on her way to a modeling shoot. The next day, unsettlingly, her phone was going straight to answer phone. It was actually her brother that ended up traveling to her apartment to figure out what was going on. He spoke to her roommates and the alarm was raised. Now, Kara's laptop was actually still at her apartment, which was concerning because if she just decided to up and left, she wouldn't have left her laptop behind. Yeah. When investigators started digging into the case, they found that Kara had been placing ads as an S worker. Interestingly, she'd actually posted an ad with her phone number on it the same day she went missing. Mm. Police also found out that her phone had been used on that day too at almost midnight. Investigators started looking into exactly which numbers she'd received calls from and set about contacting the individuals. They got a return call of Joel Hollendorfer. He admitted to police that yes, he had spoke to the girl about S services, but they'd never ended up meeting. However, when police tracked Kara's phone, her last activity was in the area of Joel's parents' house. Slime. Police ended up searching at the property with a cadaver dog. 
Disturbingly, the dog barked in loads of different areas on the property to indicate remains. However, the owner of the property stated that this must be just because they have a lot of animals and over the years the animals die and then they bury them in the back garden. The police were happy with this explanation and gave up on the search. They also though, decided to interview Joel's wife who strangely declined to cooperate with the investigation. Mm -hmm. Frustratingly, Kara's case went cold. On February the 8th, 2022, a decade after she went missing, police confirmed that they had found Kara's body. It was on that property they'd searched the whole time. Joel was obviously arrested. In February 2022, his wife decided to come clean to police. She told them that Joel had told her in 2014 that he accidentally killed an escort that he'd hired. Mm. He admitted that he accidentally strangled her to death and buried her near a dead horse on the property. Joel's defense in court claimed that he accidentally killed her in an S act gone wrong and that she lost consciousness due to substance use. Shockingly, he was only convicted of manslaughter and got just 24 years what? in prison. This was a huge blow to Kara's family. Tell me the system. Oh, we know what this is. Sure to hide your little sister from him. Two months ago, Drake was rumored to be dating and currently has been rumored to be dating the rapper Lotto's little sister hmm. the 21 year old little sister second and i'm still trying to process meet the grams i was not prepared for another drop oh, i was not ready for this but here we are so this is drake's home <laughs> future and kendrick's song like that kendrick said don't make me drop the location he dropped the location okay, so in the cover art for the song that kendrick just dropped it's showing that there's 13 individuals in drake's home which I think like this symbolizes like Drake's camp, like potentially OVO. And OVO mm. is made up primarily of 16 different individuals, including Drake. Drake has this very close entourage who are very closely associated with him on a friendship and a business level. Like for example, Baca, not nice. He has been charged and faced prison time for X trafficking. And when he got out of prison, Drake helped him become famous. What mm. my theory is, and it's probably wrong, but there's 13 people here in this cover art. And there are 16 people, a part of OVO, that are like pillars in OVO, including Drake. Do the people missing from this cover art symbolize the OVO moles? Kendrick exposing Drake is going much further than just Drake being exposed. Um, and I'm here for the tea. We, I, I'll probably make 500 more videos about these diss tracks. I'll see you guys in the next one. It's when crazy. When Kendrick started out the song talking to Adonis, I immediately knew Drake was cooked. In my head, I was like, yeah, Drake, you done. You done. I could have turned off the song where I did in there and said, yeah, Drake, you're cooked. You're finished. Retire. Because I have, I have never heard a rapper talk to somebody kids you know talk to the dude who's, like talking to a dude who he's beefing with like his his kids in the, mm -hmm. in the song i've never heard that before so when he said that i was like what the fuck? he said your granddaddy should have worn protection like oh my god he said your daddy didn't teach you shit in my opinion easily one of the most disrespectful lines in the entire song what he said when he told Adonis, let me be your mentor. Like, that is so disrespectful. Mm. Drake, me personally, me personally, if I had a son and somebody was talking about my son telling him that, me personally, I'm just saying. Babe. <sighs> Guys, you know there's been a lot of back and forth between Jake and Kendrick. How I guess Kendrick's trying to expose Drake and they like going back and forth, man, exposing both things on both sides. What do you guys think, Seekers, man? Is this true behind what both of them are saying? Because they've been going back and forth and it doesn't seem like they're slowing down. This is going to be like a slugfest. Did Kendrick get to thinking he has a daughter? 
people are claiming this is the daughter. Mm. She said, I don't know when, but she said, I guess I'll just take over the world myself, throwing up the six Drake merch shop. P.S. Wish you were here. Yesterday, Kendrick said, you need to know that love is eternity and trumps all pain. I'll tell you who your father is. Just play this song when it rains. Mm. And her name, her username is Interned. Hmm. And she was in the background of a music video with mm -hmm. J. Cole and Lil Dirt. She said, who do you spy with your eye? Me, Eternity. Here I am with real cold world, J. Cole, Lil Dirt. It was such an honor. Thanks, Pops. Who was her Pops? Yeah. Said, Dear baby girl, I'm sorry that your father not active inside your world. He don't commit to much but his music. Yeah, that's for sure. You lied about your son, you lied about your daughter, huh? You lied about them other kids that's out, that's out there hoping that you come. Last year, she just turned 10. She just turned 11. Mm. Bruh, Kendrick dropped on her birth. But people are saying, in the background of Drake's Family Matters music video, you can see posters of the girl who people are claiming as, is Drake's daughter, aka proving that Kendrick was indeed baited. Dr Drake is a genius. If this is true, Drake is smart as hell. But at the same time, he still got bodied. He's still not coming back from that diss. I'm on a Drake. What do you guys think? Does Drake have a secret daughter or was it like a sad or it was a freaking genius move on his part? It was just a beat and Kendrick took it. It's Camp who's plotting on his downfall. As we all know, we got this new track from Kendrick at 6 a.m. to respond to Drake for the second time. People are saying it's another diss track, but I think it's a personal message for Drake to let him know about his inner circle. Mm. It's a known fact that every time Drake gets in a beef, he pays his people to find dirt on the person that he has an issue with. And Loki just makes it easier. If I'm Drake, what do I look like going on Google to find info about my ops? I'm dropping a bag. But what if the yeah. person you have beef with lives one of the most peaceful lives like ever? completely backfires somehow gets right back to the person that you have the issue with this becomes the main message in 616 in la you... there's a mole inside ovo but i heard that kind of jake he kind of like he can say he planted all that information so it was his fate and i guess whoever it was if there was a mole they just gave themselves up and he knows now it's like they Playing these mind games back and forth, Kendrick and Dre is like, damn. This ain't just to me. This ain't no freaking right with beef. Us like they're throwing like With I the said, support of this fans. album to back it, Kendrick is literally saying he has nothing to hide. I mean, this album talked about it all. In that album, he said he cheated on his wife, had family issues. That whole album was basically a therapy session. Any mm. dirt that Drake's trying to find on Kendrick right now is pointless. Drake's paying people to find info while he's sitting on the couch like this. It's a perfect alley to see what Drake's gonna do next. Could it be something like Back to Back that's a straight hit record and just can't be avoided? Or will we see a poorly made diss track that has no chance of winning this battle? Only time will tell, but it's undebatable that these two are the greatest artists of our generation. Drake and Kendrick Lamar got in a rap battle. Who do you think would win? Gotta go with Kendrick. I'm just saying, I think Drake is an outstanding entertainer, but Kendrick, his last album was outstanding. Obama saw this couple like thinking years ago, but he's a damn prophet. What the hell? It's like my people, they already was picking sides back then, man. You pick it, so Obama got picking Kendrick over Drake. Is that insane? Is that crazy, man? You know, everybody has their freaking side, bro. <sighs> this beef, man, is gonna go off for a minute. That's a YouTube. If you guys stay with me to the end of the video, your true seeker is seeking the truth. I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, hit that subscribe button, man. Hit that like button. Let's grow our community, the seekers together. Like I said, man, I'm trying to do everything I can to upgrade this channel. So I really appreciate the support. You guys hit that like button. It makes everything possible. Follow me on my social medias, man. Send me the videos that you guys want to react to. I'm out. Peace, seekers.